us, Arne Duncan, the Secretary of Education in the Obama administration, member of the Obama cabinet. Secretary Duncan, welcome to our program. Hey, thanks so much for the opportunity, Tom. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. There is so much uh, debate, discussion, fireworks, frankly, around the subject of education in the United States right now. Uh, you know, from this uh, movie that uh, is fu apparently funded by, um, uh, forgetting his name, the, uh, the, the right-wing billionaire, uh, this movie is playing nearby there, and he funded also uh, Waiting for Superman, uh, Aronson, or something like that. In any case, um, to, uh, you know, all these, these things, you know, sh school choice, this kind of stuff. What is the state of education in the United States, and how is the, and, and, and beyond that, you know, what is the president doing to try to improve education in the United States, or what are you doing? The, the president and I just feel this huge sense of urgency that we have to get better faster than ever before. There's never one easy answer. We always talk about a cradle-to-career agenda. Um, we're investing very, very heavily in great early childhood education programs. That's probably the best investment we can make. We're driving a very strong uh, K-12 reform agenda. We want our high school graduates to be college and career ready. We have to reduce dropout rates. And ultimately, we have to make sure that college continues to be accessible and affordable. And I worry a lot about the cost of college. Um, the president has put unprecedented resources behind education. And obviously, there are many areas of contrast between him and his opponent. But maybe there may be no greater area than around education. We fundamentally think of education as an investment, the best investment we can make. They think of education as expense, something that can be cut. And uh, we just don't, well, we will never accept that. Yeah, I'm, I'm old enough to remember I was in the second grade when Sputnik went over and uh, Dwight Eisenhower just poured a ton of money into the public schools. And uh, in fact, uh, myself and another friend of mine were pulled out of uh, regular classes and put in this advanced program that uh, I ended up uh, getting the scholarship to MSU when I was 14. Wow. And, and, and this was this massive commitment that was made by a Republican administration yeah. Yeah. and then followed on by, by Jack Kennedy, by the Kennedy administration, and then uh, it kind of died in the, during the, the, the Nixon administration as a result of the cost of the Vietnam War. But we had public schools that were extraordinary back, you know, during that time. and. I think it would be safe to, to argue strongly that much of the modern middle class as we know it was the consequence of the GI Bill that, that's that, exactly that my dad right. went to college on. That's and, exactly and, right. And, and shouldn't we be learning some lessons from that era? No question. And that the path to the middle class goes straight through our nation's classrooms. We have to educate our way to a better economy. So we have to make sure every single public school is a great school, a school of choice. The parents can be proud to send their, their children to and the community can be proud to support. We have to make sure college continues to be accessible and affordable. One of the accomplishments I'm most proud of was an additional $40 billion for Pell Grants. We got that not by going back to taxpayers. We didn't ask for another nickel. We simply stopped subsidizing banks, put all that money into education. And just this year, we're helping almost 10 million young people go to college using those Pell Grants. So we have to continue to invest. It's actually the biggest influx, Tom, since the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't educate our way to a better economy, other countries are simply going to outcompete us long term. And so we're fighting fighting not just for our children, we're fighting for our country's economic future here. Right, and, and, and the, uh, the, the Romney-Ryan perspective on this, basically, you know, Mitt Romney was asked a while ago, uh, you know, uh, how do I start a business? And he said, well, just borrow some money from your father. Yeah. He had uh, loaned $10 million to one of his sons to start a business. Um, it, that doesn't work for all of us. Well, yeah, my dad was a tool and die maker. I couldn't borrow money from we're not, him. We're not quite that, that lucky. And I think it just yeah. shows, again, fundamentally not understanding, being so distant from the realities. And I can't tell you, Tom, how many not just disadvantaged communities I've visited, but middle class communities where people are really, really struggling trying to figure out how are we going to play for college. And so we are thrilled to invest $40 billion in Pell Grants. We are thrilled to keep Stafford interest rates from going up. But all of us have to continue to invest, us at the federal level. Level. States have to continue to invest, and universities have to keep their own tuition down as well. Um, yeah. I visited Iowa recently, was talking to a young girl, happened to be a senior. She said right now, she's a twin brother at home, right now their dinner time conversation is which twin should go to college, her or her brother. Oh my. No family should be having to make those kinds of heartbreaking decisions. That's simply not good enough. That's not who we are as Americans. Yeah. One of the one of the problems that we've seen with our healthcare system is the the, the profit motive, particularly in the insurance industry, 
it, it corrupts. You know, I mean, if your if your commitment as an institution is to make a profit, number first and foremost, and then secondarily to provide a service, you know, healthcare, something like that. We've seen that, you know, pretty unmistakably. We're now seeing it in education, particularly in these for-profit colleges that are popping up to to uh, exploit GIs coming back, you know, with money from the GI Bill. And, uh, you know, a number of scams out there and a number of colleges that are just, you know, leaving these kids high and dry and, and deeply in debt. Um, isn't it time for us to start pulling back from the whole concept of for-profit education? Well, we've worked very, very hard on this issue, Tom, and it's actually a range of players. There are some for-profits that do a good job of getting folks real, real skills that are leading to real jobs, and uh, we think that's a, that's a healthy thing. However, there were far too many who were taking disadvantaged people uh, taking a huge influx of taxpayers' resources and then leaving those people in a worse financial situation uh, than when they started. It's just absolutely morally reprehensible. So we pushed very, very hard, put in place some regulations called gainful employment, where we're going to be evaluating everyone across the board and where there are good outcomes, where people are getting good paying jobs. That's a good thing. We're happy to support it. But where folks are taking advantage of people trying to climb the economic ladder and actually pushing them further down, we simply don't think taxpayer should go to those places. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, you know, for 30 years I've been on the board of directors of a nonprofit school in New Hampshire. Uh, it's called Hunter School and uh, uh, for learning disabled kids. And we have never had a board meeting, and we're all unpaid board members. Yeah. We've never had a board meeting where we sat around and said, how much money are we making? Right. You know, it's always been, how are the kids doing? And I just, you know, I, I, I just can't imagine running that institution as a for-profit institution. It just, it just, uh, it, it just boggles my mind. What do you see as, as the, uh, the, 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 we have a trillion dollars now of student debt in the United States. It's, it's equal to our credit card debt. It's something that no other generation of Americans has ever seen. Thomas Jefferson's proudest accomplishment, he put it on his tombstone, which he himself wrote, uh, instead of the fact that he was president of the United States for two terms, uh, was the creation of a free university, the University of Virginia. Uh, Abraham Lincoln famously created the land-grant college system, yeah. including Michigan State, where I went, briefly. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it, 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 this, we have a long history of free education. We had an incredible educational system in California before Ronald Reagan was governor. He tore that apart. Um, uh, at what point do we say this is insane? We have never, ever in the history of this country had a trillion dollars worth of student loan debt. Yeah. We shouldn't now. I couldn't agree more, and I always talk about shared responsibility. So the president and I have tried to walk the walk and lead by example. Obviously, very tough economic times where he is flatlining or reducing much of domestic spending. We have had historic increases I talked about in Pell Grants. We were able to keep Stafford interest rates from doubling so the problem didn't get even worse. We've put in place something called pay as you earn, so the young people graduating, if they're making more money, they pay more back. Um, in terms of their debt, if they're making less money, uh, they pay less back. And what's really important uh, in this new regulation, Tom, is that after 10 years of public service, 10 years of being a teacher or working in a nonprofit or working for government, all that debt is going to be forgiven, is erased now, so we can bring that great talent in. So we are absolutely trying to lead by example. Have you passed that? Is that, that in is law passed. now? That's called income-based repayment. You can find it on our website, studentaid.gov. Uh, and encourage your, your, your viewers, your listeners to, to, to come and check us out. But to be clear, Tom, we're thrilled with the progress, but we can't do it by ourselves. States have to continue to invest. Forty states last year cut funding to higher education, Republican and Democrat. And when I meet with the governors every year, I challenge them very hard on that. And universities themselves have to do a better job of being efficient, keeping their tuition down in these tough economic times, and being more creative with using things like technology as well. And, and yet at the same time, if you look at the OECD nations, the 34, I think it is, uh, the majority of them offer free college education to their students. In some cases, they require a year of public service, you know, of uh, military service, or working in nonprofits in exchange for that, or other things. But, but basically, an education is free, or so close to cheap that it is functionally free. Uh, we did our show for a week from Denmark, and not only is college free there, they pay you, a, you know, they give you a couple hundred bucks a month as a stipend for your expenses, yeah. and they're way ahead of us. 
is, is there any discussion of doing something like that in the United States? Um, I would love to create that kind of opportunity. How we get there is, is, a, is a, you know, a tough path uh, these days with a, you know, so many folks in Congress who look at education as an expense rather than the true investment it is. Yeah. But Tom, my wife's from Australia. She experienced a very similar situation, yep. went to a great university, paid almost nothing for it, and because the, the nation sees this as, as an investment in itself. Yeah. And so I think, is again, as a country, I think that the the, uh, the contrast here, the choice is so clear. Is education an investment, which is what we firmly believe in our bones and in our heart, or is it an expense that can be cut? And that's what the other side thinks. Yeah, and tragically, tragically. Uh, we're talking with Secretary Arne Duncan, Secretary of Education in the Obama administration, BarackObama.com, of course, the website. Uh, Secretary Duncan, thank you so much for joining us today and for your candid responses to, to some of the what might have been rather tough questions. Thank you for joining us. No, thanks so much for the opportunity. Have a great day now. I appreciate it. Good talking with you. Thank you.